Okay, now we are going to look at question number 13. A car of mass 1000 kg is traveling along the straight line, uh, straight road. Friction between the ground and the wheels of the car is 400 Newton, while air resistance that act against the car is 100 Newton. Uh, gravitational field strength, okay, uh, G, which is the gravity, is 10 Newton per kg. So in this scenario, okay, there's a few uh, information, so you can actually highlight mass. Okay, the friction is 400. Okay, and the air resistance X against the car is 100 Newton. So over here, okay, let's see what is the first question about. Calculate the weight of the car. Uh, so please remember for weight, uh, the formula is W equals to mg. Mass is 1000 and uh, the gravity is 10. So the weight is actually 10,000 Newton or you can write it as 10 kilo Newton. And secondly, state the net force acting on the car. Okay, so net force is zero. Why? Uh, because right over here, you can see that okay, the car itself is actually uh, traveling at a constant uh, speed. Right. Okay, now we are going to look at uh, the other scenarios, which is uh, the unbalanced forces. So if you were to refer back to the mind map again, all right, you can actually see that, um, okay, you can see that under the uh, net or resultant force, okay, we got two scenarios. One is the unbalanced force. The other one is called the net force equals to zero. So under unbalanced force, where the net force is more than zero, we know that the object is moving. And it's also accelerating as compared to the previous example uh, where the object is moving with constant speed. So let's take a look at this question. Two forces X on the 2 kilogram object as shown. What is the net force acting on the object? So in this case, 9 Newton is pushing to the right, 5 Newton is uh, pulling it to the left. So there is an unbalanced force of 4 Newton to the right. So the object is under the influence of unbalanced forces. Uh, what happens to a stationary object when a non-zero net force acts on it? Okay, the object may accelerate or decelerate. Okay, let's look at this uh, example of question 2. A worker pushes a box of mass 30 kg on a floor that can be considered uh, frictionless, means there's no friction, smooth, okay? The box accelerates from with a uniform acceleration of 2 meters per second. So as you can see over here, Right, there is an acceleration of 2 meters per second square. Okay, so calculate the net force acting on the box. So if you recall net force, okay, F equals to MA, or some people write as F net equals to MA, is the same thing. Right, we know that acceleration is 2, so we substitute a 2. The mass is 30 kilogram, and the net force acting on the object is 60 newton. Okay, so just take note, okay, this 60 newton is a net force. The worker pushes the box for 5 seconds, calculate the final velocity of the box. Okay, so this one, okay, we have, since we know the acceleration, so we can actually use this formula A equals to V minus U over T. For some of you, uh, as you all know, V is the final velocity, U is the starting velocity, T is the time. So, if I want to find the final velocity, so what I'm finding is basically to find V. Right, to find V. Okay, so after substituting in, so uh for this part, if you look, if it looks a bit confusing, okay, let me just uh walk you through. So what you can do is first substitute the value for uh, acceleration. So acceleration, as you have found out in the question, is two. So you can put two first. Two equals to V is something that we need to find. How about the starting velocity? Okay, the starting velocity is actually zero. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, so over here we are assuming that it pushes okay from rest, and then uh, the time is actually um given uh over here, which is five seconds. So we can simplify it v over five. Okay. So in the end, v is equals to. 5 times 2 equals to 10 meters per second. 
okay so over here right is a more difficult example in finding the final velocity of the object 